Hello everyone, welcome back to yet another video from my channel Interactive Education, running for the best education possible from the student to the student for a better experience. And today we will be discussing a concept from class 11 chemistry, although it is there in class 10, not in detail. But uh, in detail in class 11, we are going to cover the class 11 portion of this topic and that is redox reactions. Redox reactions. So, this is a concept you've learned in class 10 as well. But when we were doing the chapter chemical reactions and equations, in which we studied the types of reactions, we had redox reaction as one of the types of reactions. In this chapter, we will be focusing in detail about redox reactions. If you remember from class 10, you saw that you had many kinds of reactions. You had combination reactions, you had decomposition reactions, you had displacement reactions, you had double displacement reactions, and finally we took redox reactions. But you must have noticed one thing. You also learned how to balance equations, right? You learned how to balance equations. But you must have noticed one thing. Whichever equation you balanced, it was one of either combination reaction or decomposition reaction or displacement or double displacement reaction. It was never a reaction which was only a redox reaction. It was a reaction which could be put into either of these. Hence, you understand, you should understand one thing that redox reactions can't be balanced by normal methods such as our heat and trial method. Why is this so? It is because redox reactions involve ions, ion exchanges and electrons and basically charge and for a reaction to be well, you know same for a reaction to be balanced it is imperative that the charge is also balanced on both sides but if we take a redox reaction and balance it using our hit and trial method it will not balance the charge it may balance the number of atoms but it will not balance the charge Hence, redox reactions need to be balanced through a new mechanism. But before that, you need to understand a new approach to redox reactions in the first place. Because redox reactions, as per the 10 standard concepts, are only the classical theory of redox reactions. It's only the classical concept. But redox reaction is much more. Much, much, much more. And redox reaction can be determined and can be explained on the basis of a new concept called oxidation number. So this was basically an overview of what you're going to learn in this chapter. You will be learning new concepts of redox reactions, what are redox reactions, a new definition of redox reaction. You're going to learn about the concept of oxidation number and defining redox reactions based on this oxidation number. And you will also be learning how to balance redox reactions because as I told you they involve charge variation also. Yeah. So this is what we call a redox reaction. And this is an overview of the chapter redox reactions. Let us now try to come back to the basic. What do we mean by the term redox reaction? Now, you all have learned about chemical reactions in class 10th. Right? A chemical reaction is basically the process involved in a chemical change. So, it is the process involved in a chemical change. So if you take any chemical change, it will have a series of events or a basic process. And this process is what we call a chemical reaction. The process involved in a chemical change is called a chemical reaction. Now this chemical reaction can be of many kinds. And you've learned this last year as well. You can have a combination reaction, right? You can have a decomposition reaction. You can have a displacement reaction. You can have a double displacement reaction, which is also called ion exchange reaction. And fifth is your new kind of reaction, redox reaction. Right? But this is the class 10th concept class 10 classification. In 11th standard, you need to go a bit higher to this. Now, 
These are the different kinds of reactions you learnt last year. Combination, decomposition, displacement, double displacement and redox reaction. Let's recall what they are. Combination reaction is a reaction where, what happens? When two or more uh, elements or compounds, usually elements, constituent elements of a compound come together to form that element. When two or more constituent elements of a compound come together and react to form that same element. That is a combination reaction, right? For example, formation of water, H2 plus O2 gives H2O, not balanced, okay? H2 plus O2 gives 2H2O. You can see here the constituent elements of water, hydrogen and oxygen are combining to form water, combination reaction. Decomposition, exact opposite of combination reaction. When a compound in the presence of some source of energy decomposes or breaks into its constituent elements, so, for example, or in two simpler substances, for example, uh, you can take the example of calcium carbonate. When you heat calcium carbonate, you will get calcium oxide and carbon dioxide gas. Here, decomposition of calcium carbonate is taking place. And the reverse can also happen, where calcium oxide reacts with carbon dioxide to form calcium carbonate. Next is displacement reaction. Displacement reaction is a reaction where a more reactive metal displaces a less reactive metal from the salt solution. For example, iron, which is one of the reactive metals, combines with copper sulfate, which is the sulfate salt of copper, a less reactive metal. The iron will displace copper and form iron sulfate, which is here in the case, in this case, it is ferrous sulfate plus copper solid. Right? Here, iron, a reactive metal displacing copper to form ferric sulfate, ferrous sulfate and copper. Then, double displacement reaction where there is exchange of anions. For example, barium chloride plus sodium sulfate, right? Now, this sodium sulfate gives Na plus ions and SO4 minus 2 ions. And barium chloride gives Ba plus ions, sorry, Ba plus 2 ions and Cl minus ions. Now, this Sulfate ion will go to this compound and the chloride ion will come to this compound and you, uh, come to the sodium and you will get barium sulfate BaSO4 because the barium reacts with sulfur, a sulfate ion. Barium sulfate plus NaCl, sodium chloride because the Na reacts with the chloride ion coming from barium chloride. Right? Double displacement reaction. And then you learnt about the redox reaction. The redox reaction. Now, how did you define a redox reaction? You defined redox reaction based on two processes, right? One was oxidation and the other was reduction, right? Now, oxidation you defined last year as gain of oxygen. So, when you are adding oxygen, addition of oxygen or gain of oxygen by a particular compound or element, when a particular compound or element is combining with oxygen, we say that it is being oxidized. Or, or it is combining with a more electronegative element. More electronegative element. So, either that compound or element is combining with oxygen directly or with a more electronegative element with respect to that element or compound. It can also be defined as Removal of hydrogen. Removal of hydrogen or more electropositive element. Or more electropositive element. So, when you are removing hydrogen or a more electropositive element from a compound or element, then we say it is oxidation again, right? Either combining with oxygen or electronegative element or removal of hydrogen or electropositive element. Right? This was how you defined oxidation last year, right? Next, we come to reduction. Reduction is the exact opposite of oxidation, where there is gain of hydrogen, gain of hydrogen or electropositive element, gain of hydrogen or electropositive element, that is with respect to that element or compound, or removal of oxygen, removal of oxygen, or electronegative element. Removal of oxygen or electronegative element. Right? So, this is how you define reduction last year. Right? Now, what was a redox reaction? A reaction in which reduction 
and oxidation take place simultaneously. A reaction in which reduction and oxidation take place simultaneously is defined as a redox reaction. Right? So, where these two came together, you had a redox reaction. Right? Oxidant plus reduction, oxidation plus reduction gets redox reaction. Right? Keep in mind about this one thing. Oxidation and reduction always take place simultaneously. That is, isolated oxidation, that is alone, oxidation alone, and isolated reduction, that is reduction alone, are not possible. You cannot have a reaction where there is only oxidation taking place or where there is only reduction taking place. Both have to come together and are seen in the same reaction. Clear? Now, that is one of the biggest drawbacks of this concept of redox reaction in these definitions. These definitions are called the classic theory of redox. Classic theory of redox reactions. Classic theory of redox reactions, right? And the biggest drawback of this classic theory is that you might see some compound or some reactions where you will see only oxidation, where you feel, where you feel there is only oxidation, right? For example, very, very common misconception, magnesium reacts with oxygen to give MgO, right? Here, this is basically the burning of magnesium. Magnesium burns in the presence of oxygen in air to give MgO. Now, here you will say, sir, magnesium is the only element which is undergoing oxidation. MgO, is, uh, oxygen is added to magnesium and it's forming MgO. But what if I tell you, I mean, it may, I mean, it may seem right with respect to this definition, right? But oxygen is combining with an electropositive element and forming MgO. Can I say that? Yes. So again, this is also an example of a redox reaction because here magnesium is combining with oxygen to form MgO. This is oxidation. And oxygen is combining with a highly electropositive element like magnesium to form a compound that is reduction. Right? So here, you need to be really, really careful. However, as I told you, this theory was not 100% correct because in many cases, this theory is not sufficient to study redox reactions in detail. Right? So for this very purpose, we came up with the concept of oxidation number. Right? We came up with the concept of oxidation number. But I'll discuss oxidation number in the next class or in the next video. For now, try to understand what we mean by a redox reaction. Redox reaction, as for the classical theory, is the oxidation process plus the reduction process. Oxidation is the gain of oxygen or more electronegative element, removal of hydrogen or more electropositive element. Reduction is the gain of hydrogen or electropositive element or removal of oxygen or electronegative element. Right? Now, let us try to analyze these reactions and see whether some of them are redox reactions or not. If you look at combination reaction, and let's take this example, hydrogen plus oxygen gives water. Here, hydrogen combines with oxygen is getting oxidized and forming water, that is oxidation. And oxygen is combining with an electropositive element such as hydrogen and forming water. Again, oxygen is being reduced. So it's a redox reaction, right? Similarly, you will see many combination reactions where redox reaction takes place where we can define that reaction as a redox reaction. And you should understand one thing, that most combination reactions, majority of combination reactions are redox reactions. So, majority, majority are redox reactions. Majority are redox reactions. Clear? Next, we come to decomposition reactions. Look at this reaction itself. Calcium carbonate is heated to give calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. Now, I am just writing down the oxidation numbers. However, when we will do oxidation numbers later, you will realize how I am saying this, right? But let's not, let me try to do it without oxidation number method. Calcium carbonate is heated to give calcium oxide. Here, you can see that calcium is losing a carbon atom. And carbon is more electronegative or less electronegative? It is less electro, it is more electronegative. So, yeah, less electropositive, more electronegative. 
Now this is your oxidation, right? Because you are losing an oh, sorry, not oxidation, it is reduction. Since you are losing an electronegative element, and calcium carbonate is losing calcium, an electropositive element, and it is forming carbon dioxide, right? So it is losing an electropositive element. Can we say it is reduction? No, we cannot. And that is why I will say that this is the drawback of the redox reaction concept on the basis of this. That it is saying that calcium carbonate is a redox reaction. Where in reality, calcium carbonate decomposition is not a redox reaction. Clear? Let's explain this. I'll explain this using the oxidation number concept. Calcium carbonate, oxidation number of calcium here is plus 2. You will learn about it further, don't worry. For oxygen, it is minus 2. So, per atom. So, 3, 2 is minus 6 and the overall has to be 0. So, 3, 2 minus 6, plus 2 minus 4. So, carbon has to be plus 4. Calcium here is also plus 2 and oxygen here is minus 2. Here, oxygen is again minus 2. So, 2, 2 minus 4 and it has to be plus 4. If you see, you will notice that no element undergoes change in any oxidation number. So, there is neither reduction nor oxidation right so here you need to understand that calcium carbonate decomposition is not a redox reaction clear now so can we say that decomposition reactions are not redox reactions not exactly actually some redox some decomposition reactions are not redox reactions but there are some which are also redox reactions so they may or may not be redox reactions may or may not be redox reactions it depends on the nature of the reaction we cannot generalize right next we come to displacement reactions here you can see iron iron here will have oxidation number zero okay here copper will have oxidation number plus two and the sulfate ion total has oxidation number minus two here iron has plus two oxidation number the sulfate ion has minus two oxidation number and copper has zero oxidation number so, if you see, the oxidation number of iron is increasing from 0 to plus 2, right? Increase in oxidation number is, can you guess? Yes, it is oxidation. So, there is oxidation taking place for iron and copper's oxidation number is decreasing, which is reduction. So, copper sulfate gets reduced to copper. So, here you can see it is a redox reaction, right? And in general, if you see many, a majority of displacement reactions are redox reactions. So, they are redox reactions right but if we look at the last kind of reaction double displacement reaction here barium has plus two oxidation state here chlorine has minus one oxidation state sodium has plus one oxidation number or oxidation state and sulfate ion has minus two oxidation state if you look at barium here it has plus two oxidation state and sulfate has minus two oxidation state Sodium has plus 1 oxidation state and chlorine has minus 1 oxidation state. So, you will see that again, just as we saw in this calcium carbonate case, there is no change in the oxidation number of any of the elements. And this is applicable to all redox reactions. This is applicable to all double displacement reactions, not redox reactions, sorry, all double displacement reactions. You will not see a change in any of the elements or compounds oxidation number or ions oxidation number. Hence, double displacement reactions are not redox reactions. Are not, not, not redox reactions. Clear? So, here we analyzed all the reactions. Combination reactions are majority redox reactions. Decomposition reactions may or may not be redox reactions. Displacement reactions are always redox reactions. And double displacement reactions are not redox reactions. So, using these observations, chemists have divided chemical reactions into two main categories. Depending on this, right? They have divided chemical reactions into two main categories. So, a chemical reaction or chemical reactions in general can be classified into two main categories. One is a, a redox reaction and the other can be double displacement reaction or ion exchange reaction. 
ion exchange reaction right because we saw double displacement reactions are not redox reactions while the majority of other chemical reactions in the chemistry world are redox reactions clear in redox reactions there is change in oxidation number of elements which results in reduction in oxidation together forming redox whereas in double displacement reaction none of the oxidation numbers change and hence simply change of ions takes place without change in oxidation number clear i hope this is absolutely clear to you right so with this i have concluded this video on introduction to redox reactions and the different forms of reactions as redox reactions thank you very much for joining me please look up to the next video which will be the second part of the series on redox reactions which will inculcate redox uh, the concept of oxidation number and on the basis of oxidation number how we can define redox reactions clear thank you very much for joining me goodbye any comments or doubts are welcome in the comment section below stay healthy stay smart and do keep studying like and subscribe bye bye